Today's video is a different one. I'm going to give you a glimpse into SA Magic, my signature program. It's an eight weeks transformation bootcamp where I help you transition to the role of a cloud solutions architect with a tailored plan and support every step of the way. We started the first cohort on February, we just ended up and I couldn't be happier. Today's video is one of the lectures of module seven, a module about driving adoption of solutions across the organization. My name is Ilyas, I'm a senior solutions architect. Enjoy. In this lecture, we will explore techniques that you can leverage as a solutions architect to effectively communicate your solutions. Because yes, a good solutions architect might stop after the solution is presented, but a great solutions architect is one that follows up on their solutions and makes sure they are implemented according to the plan. Just like how building architects visits the construction sites regularly for inspection, it should be your responsibility in my humble opinion, to follow up with stakeholders and pretty much make sure it's all going according to the plan. Now, I've made all kinds of mistakes when I was coming up as a solutions architect and all kinds of learnings as well. And as we've been doing in this program, I will continue to make it my goal to summarize these learnings in an easily digestible format to help you take shortcuts and successfully transition to the role and become a great solutions architect. So let's explore what I have for you around how to communicate solutions effectively by expanding on the following items. Know your audience, simplify complex ideas, utilize visual aids, tell a story, showcase benefits, value, and return investments, encourage uh, feedback and questions, and practice active listening. And I'll try my best to present a ton of examples whenever possible to drive this home. Principle number two is simplify complex ideas. You know, technical jargon and, and complex concepts, they can easily be a roadblock for effective communication. I want you to remember here to break down complex ideas into simpler terms. Maybe the audience doesn't know what S3 is, you know, so you probably want to replace it with storage service. Simple. Second is use analogies, use metaphors to make concepts more relatable. When I talk uh, about virtualization, for example, I usually use an apartment building analogy. The building, that's the physical server, contains multiple apartment units, those are virtual servers, each occupied by different tenants. Tenants are the applications. And these tenants share common resources, such as water, such as electricity. Those are the storage, the CPU, the memory, right? If I'm talking about infrastructure uh, as a service, IaaS, I usually use a car rental analogy. You rent a vehicle, that's the virtual machine. You rent it for a certain period of time and you only pay for what you use. You can choose different vehicle sizes, different models. Those, uh, for example, the, the compute instances, the storage, the networking resources, and you choose those based on your needs. Okay, let's do another analogy. I'm, I'm having fun. If I'm talking about software as a service, SaaS, uh, I would use restaurant analogy. The restaurant is the SaaS provider. They offer you or it offers you a selection of pre-made dishes. Those are specific software applications. Uh, and these are already listed in a menu. And then you can consume these uh, dishes without worrying about the process of cooking. You know, that's the installation process, the maintenance, the hosting. So you see how these analogies can provide a simple way to understand cloud concepts without delving into the technical details that non-technical audiences, we just find annoying, to be honest. All right, next item on the list is to avoid using technical jargon when it's not necessary, right? For example, instead of saying, we'll implement a new CRM with a microservices architecture for scalability, you probably wanna explain it the following way. The proposed CRM allows us to grow our customer base without performance issues, like constructing a building with easily added floors. Everyone in the audience can understand that. And then you can have as many technically driven follow-ups with the specific uh, tech savvy departments, folks, teams in the organization. Okay, next thing, use visual aids. As I mentioned uh, during the presentation lectures, 
Visual aids are crucial for helping audiences understand complex concepts. So consider incorporating flowcharts, diagrams, infographics, slideshows. These go a long way in really driving your concepts home. And this will give stakeholders a clear visual representation of the process. It's also easier for us humans to just look at a picture, a graph, and completely and intuitively grasp the meaning behind it, rather than having to uh, scan the slides and decks and for, for, for a ton of <laughs> stories. My next concept is to tell a story. Now, this is a concept I heavily rely on during my presentations. Why? Well, storytelling can be a powerful tool for presenting a technical solution to stakeholders. Okay. Here's an example for you. Let's talk about cybersecurity enhancements. A story would go like this. Global Tech Inc., a company similar to our own, recently suffered a severe cyber attack that compromised sensitive data, leading to financial loss and reputational damage. Executives were scrambling to rectify the issue while employees and customers were left in the dark, anxious and unsure. After you tell the story, you can start presenting your solution. So the solution would be proactively upgrading cybersecurity measures, such as deploying next-gen firewalls, uh, endpoint protections, and employee training programs will help prevent, prevent such a damaging scenario. And not only will these measures safeguard our company's data and reputation, but they will also instill trust and confidence among our clients, partners, and workforce. All right, let's do another one uh, about moving to a unified communication system. The story would go like this. Tom, Bob, Alice, let's use Alice. Alice, one of our remote employees during pandemic was experiencing difficulties communicating with her colleagues. I was talking to her and she was expressing these difficulties since they all use various collaboration tools inconsistently. Alice was mentioning how important messages get lost, how miscommunication causes project delays and, and cause collaboration uh, to be stifled, leading to a feeling of isolation and frustration. Now you can introduce your solution. So you can have uh, the story in one slide and the solution in a different slide since you are doing a presentation. So the solution would be introducing a unified communication system, streamlines communication across multiple channels uh, that includes voice calls, video conferencing, instant messaging. And so by consolidating these tools into one platform, collaboration becomes seamless and Alice can work more efficiently with her teams, regardless of their location. Let's explore the next concept I want you to keep in mind, which is showcasing the benefits, showcasing the value, never forget that, showcasing the return on investments. And this is a key concept of any successful technical presentation. So I want you to focus on aspects like time saving, you know, where you describe how your solution will streamline tasks, uh, will automate processes, well, which, in return will help uh, employees save time, uh, which will boost productivity, which will shorten the time to go to market. So to give you an example here, I would say maybe we go with an installing uh, an automated help desk ticketing system that would decrease the time taken to assign, to prioritize and resolve issues, freeing up the IT staff time to focus on more strategic tasks. From the cost effectiveness perspective, this is where you quantify the cost saving associated with implementing the solution. And this could include uh, software, hardware consolidations, it would include reduced maintenance cost, um, decreased personal exp expenses. Let's give another example. Implementing a cloud-based infrastructure would not only eliminate the need for in-house servers and associated maintenance costs, but it would also enable the organization to scale resources according uh, to demand, um, minimize waste, and ensure cost-effective operations. From the competitive market, cost to long-term All right, let me, let me try to summarize this section by going back to the CRM example. So you can dedicate a slide to emphasize how implementing the new CRM will lead to a shorter sales cycle, improved customer satisfaction, and cost savings 
thanks to automation and better data insights. To give you another example that is not a CRM, um, we'd say um, you can explore or you can showcase in the slide how implementing a new e-commerce platform may have an initial capital cost of say $50,000, but the expected cost savings, increased sales revenue, and process improvements results uh, will have a return of an, on investment of 150% within two years. I just came up with these numbers, but when you are building your uh, solutions architecture documents, your situation will be clearer to you. Next concept here is to encourage feedback and questions. Because creating an inclusive and open environment during your presentations or other ceremonies like grooming backlogs or stand up or whatever, this can promote active engagements from all the stakeholders. This enables them to contribute their thoughts, to ask questions, to provide feedback, ultimately stimulating and engaging two-way communication. Let's linger a little bit more here and, and let me provide uh, more aspects to consider with examples. You want to be interactive, right? You want to encourage stakeholders' participation during the presentation or whatever ceremony you're doing by regularly pausing and inviting questions or comments. For example, after explaining the new disaster recovery plan, you could say, this plan covers multiple scenarios. Can you think of any other potential risk scenario we haven't addressed? You also want to proactively address concerns and uh, objections during the presentation by highlighting potential issues and providing solutions. For example, during a presentation on buying a SaaS, buying a software license, you could say, we understand some departments might be concerned about the learning curve. Now to address this, we've arranged for comprehensive training and ongoing support for all teams, right? Whether it's real time or whether it's afterward. And that wraps up today's lecture. With these tips under your belt, you'll be better equipped to communicate your technical solutions effectively to stakeholders. Thank you all. See you in the next one.